firm where they stood in terms of representing uh, the, the, their vehicle. So, nonetheless, we will pick it up, you know, from where we left it off. But uh, today, Nissan Navara versus Isuzu. I cannot wait to get into this one. What's your car of choice? What's your pickup of choice? Hit me up on 0719-100404. Just, 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 just tell me the name of the baki that you that you prefer yeah on our whatsapp just just leave if it's nissan just say nissan if it's isuzu and then when we end the show we'll 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 see how it tallies how it fares in terms of uh, the one that 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 wins and uh somewhere along i'll tell you which one i'm going for uh, I've I've already I've I've already been warned that ah uh, guy you you've already made the wrong choice but either way I'm sticking to my choice that's what that's where we add today joining us in studio uh, of course as usual automotive technician the car doctor Mr Clayton Green good morning to you Clay thank you so much for joining us top of the morning my man thanks for having us awesome stuff man. awesome thanks, stuff uh, Mr Dennis uh, Dennis Thomas in the studio as well our uh, certified diesel pump technician good morning to you Dennis thank you so much for joining us morning scatter morning listeners morning viewers the, the, the car enthusiast <laughs> <laughs> I like it already because uh, already people are sending in which cars they are for so uh, it's going to be an interesting one today really really tight I feel like it's tight honestly but anyway we will we'll see um, how, how this one fares but where to start gentlemen because these two cars like just like last week are beasts as well in terms of you know overall functions um these are just monsters on the road clay how do you br br break the ice in this one look um i think it's it's a bit of a challenge in the sense that uh, there's a plethora of vehicles to choose from out there when it comes to choosing a bucky and choosing the right bucky you know making informed decisions and looking at their history and considering a lot of factors put them all together and then make the choice and pull the trigger on the bucky that you want. Um, for me, much as it goes up against everybody's grain, today I'm going to have to fight for the Nissans. Okay. I'll have to fight for the Nissans. And I'll put in a good word or two for them there. So Nissan fans, please hold on to your seats. This is coming. Nissan fans have already come through. Yeah. For, um, um, so so it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, but let's talk about... Uh, the diesel um the the engine i'm 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 excited about the engine aspect as well i understand the nissan the nissan has a twin turbocharged engine as compared to uh the isuzu turbocharged but what what separates these two all right i'll, I'll go back a little bit in history you know yes. um a little bit of history the nissan navara debuted as far back as 1997 1998 and they came out with the infamous YD 2.2 and the 2.5 litre diesel engines. Many of us recall opening the bonnets on these Nissans and there's this gleaming engine inside this motor vehicle with this Neo printed all over uh, the intercooler. This was mind-blowing technology for us because, I mean, we hadn't seen anything like that there. But what that Neo actually stands for is Nissan Ecology Orientated Engine. And... Um, that was Nissan's depiction of the engine, which to us at the time was all new territory. As um, Dennis alluded last uh, uh, last week with, uh, with the way the diesel system works, in 98, this, these things were running what was called a rotary injection system, which was more like your old school type fuel pump, but had pipes that basically lifted fuel individually to the cylinders, not like your normal common rail, which is what we're going to get into later on. But for the time, at the time, these YD engines were super smooth and, 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 and really, really, they were so smooth and such a, such a nice little engine. They were being not only run in the Navaras, but also in the Almeras and other, and other different models in the Nissan range. Interesting stuff. Uh, Dennis, a little bit on... Um the Isuzu. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Isuzu, um, the back is, um, I think um, they, they, they started coming onto our um, streets around the 70s and um, it has uh, evolved along the way from the, the old uh, 
tied to the the fourth generation they've produced uh, to this level we've got the isuzu sixth generation just like nissan the fuel system has gone along the same way yeah in, in terms of technology they both use um denser technology although nissan is diverted a little bit uh, when they are current navara they've um, opted to go for siemens system i don't know if, if that makes sense i don't know if that makes sense different type of software really yeah it's just different um manufacturers coming in uh, to support their fuel system so that's where the difference is but uh, uh what what's name i suppose you're stuck to to denso and um, i find denso it's much more friendly mm -hmm. to work on than, than, than the siemens especially on the on the new navara i think from 2020 mm -hmm. yeah they've brought in the the siemens they've partnered with siemens on their fuel system which is a bit of a, a challenge in the market especially for repairing mm -hmm. as compared to the to the dental that um asus mm, uses becomes more personalized more specific orientated right unlike with the with the denso systems you 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 got a wider variety of choice there's a lot more manufacturers that offer backup services interesting uh, so uh, when we speak of the evolution of these two cars uh, what can we perhaps pick out as uh, the uh, the, the core components of of the evolution uh, when we speak of the the, the nissan okay. what are the things that we're looking at in its evolution that have really stuck out especially right now okay if we if you if i'll go back a little bit to what you asked earlier on your question on the twin turbos and the single turbos yeah that earlier yd22 engine when it came out in 1998 that engine won the 1998 show in taisho award which stands for you know the energy conservation award Right, and at the time that was neck-breaking technology, mind-breaking technology. What it was was that the way the turbo system worked, the way the the, the, the fuel system worked, right? It ran through a a, a turbo that ran wastegate, a, a, a single turbo that ran a wastegate system. But as technology has, has 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 come on the market and things start to evolve and run better and work better, you find the newer versions run. Um, um, uh, 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 a more operated fuel system, right, which is your common rail system. And on that common rail system, um, you have a high pressure pump that's pumping into a, f a common rail, and the injectors are now electronically controlled, which is a good thing. It gets them to to fire better, run better, and work better. And over and above that, there the turbo systems have evolved into what's called a, 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 a VIN turbo. So you, instead of just one wastegate that opens and closes and, 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 and shuts, um, you find that particular system as what we call turbo lag. You, you accelerate, you wait for a few minutes, and then you get hit by this bang in the seat, and then the vehicle takes off. That's, that's turbo lag. You find with the new technology, with the VIN turbos, right, uh, um, um, it's, you've got little veins inside the turbo housing that are actually opening and closing as per need reference the demand that the engine is, 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 is being requested of. And as a result, you find that they, they, these new vehicles experience very little turbo lag and they're able to get two turbos to work on a single engine very, very efficiently and powerfully at the same time. So essentially it's now smoother in terms of Lots smoother. How you transition in the gears and stuff yes, like that. Yes, yes, yes. Especially if you're a guy that likes towing, if you're a guy that's using your vehicle for all sorts of different things. You 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 find the vehicles of now, unlike before, you'd hop into a vehicle before and you can tell, wow, I'm in the diesel car. Mm. Right. Uh, uh, you're waiting for the power to hit in. Mm -hmm. Now with the new cars, you can't tell the difference. Mm. From the minute you press that accelerator, those cars have got horsepower, get up and go from the word go. Mm. Uh, I was watching something yesterday on, on um, the Isuzu and they were explaining something to do with you know, the, you know that that truck sound that you hear that the car produces as well, and I think it, it it's something that they've been working on over time as well to make sure that it it, it becomes smoother. Uh, a little bit on you know the whole process or the whole idea of 
you know how how the car produces that is it is it a power thing when you hear that sound or is it a force thing that is really kicking in no it it, it has been their signature right sort of uh, they've tried to they've reduced the sound but it, it remains the isuzu signature you can actually tell an isuzu uh, it's from, approaching yeah yes yes from other vehicles and um it's quite a sexy sound sometimes <laughs> <laughs> i like that i know you're voting for your car I like it. <laughs> no. was, surely you need to to hear but i uh, know there's something coming mm -hmm. no you, you can actually feel that there is an isuzu it's now quieter but uh, that signature sound you can actually feel it mm. you can actually hear the the the, the signature sound from that that's the isuzu yeah. yeah but 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 what happens when you know I, I, you all see it with cars that have been perhaps been on the road for for quite some time that the that sound now is really really perhaps louder is it because of obviously it's been in use for a long time so you you will expect to hear that sound uh more frequently uh, due to wear and tear and um also it has to do with uh, how how good you are looking after your vehicle, your service routines, are you sticking to them? Are you sticking to the specified oil um, SP, the manufacturer? We spoke about that also. You would find an old ISUS that has been well kept, it will be sounding maybe much, much better right. than, than one that has been roughly kept sort of yeah uh, when, when it comes to the the, the reconditioning of uh, the, the engine um is it is it any better now in terms of the new models because obviously i want to believe you, you don't have to do a lot if you just keep your car in condition like you're saying there's not much that's needed uh in terms of reconditioning of the engines yeah um i think mr green you can come in there look Reconditioning the engines, you you got to consider a few factors. If you recall a couple of programs back, we, we, we spoke about uh, a lot of service maintenance items that need to be followed. Right. If it unfortunately gets to a point where, say, your vehicle is overheated, your vehicle has, the oil has sludged up and it's run a bearing, and you come to Genu Parts, or you go to Tom's Diesels and you, you, you're you needing an engine overhaul, right? A lot of factors need to be considered. One, you as the customer need to, need to weigh in your the cost factor. Two, am I getting decent quality space put into it? Three, you know, um, is it value for money? If all these factors are, are balancing out and you do, do decide to go with an engine overhaul, Right, you know, over and above the fact that you've got the question marks of the spares being put in, you're also questioning the machining, you're also questioning the, 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 the workmanship, so, uh, of the assembly of the engine. So, um, getting it done right does have a lot to do with how the engine's going to run in the long term. This is why you find a lot of people opt for, if an engine blows, let's go to a supplier and have them give us one of these imported engines because that way you know it's a 50 50 chance you can't guarantee whether the engine is square or it's not square you got no history on it mm. do you take the do you, do you do you bite the bullet and go with that motor or do you overhaul it and if it makes sense to you look go with whatever you go with going for which 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 you've done a thorough search on and if it does come to the point where you overhaul the engine and you are running with it, is it running the way you want it to run? Okay, so once you've considered all those factors and you're doing it right, um, enjoy your car. Go with it. Mm. But like what we alluded to in, in, in the previous shows, the best thing, try to keep your engine in, in a good condition. Look after your engine. Do the the things that are recommended by your technicians, your mechanics, that are recommended by the manufacturer, so that you don't come to that point of doing an engine over. Because um, some engines you can easily run to 150,000 plus, 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 plus. But you, you find people, their engines, they're picking up uh, below some some people you find it hundred thousand the engine now needs an overhaul the right. rings are gone 
it's now smoking, it's now making noise, and um, all those kind of things. Mm. But, because, uh, but with this, with these uh, models, um, aren't they made made more for for off road, um, you know, off road traveling? Is, is isn't that the whole idea of, you know, or, or you're talking in terms of just how you you, you keep the car, generally how you how you yeah. Off road, um, it doesn't it doesn't uh, mean that you have to skip the the service intervals. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to use uh, inferior oil. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, use an inferior filter. Mm -hmm. you, you still have to to keep the um, the proper the proper oils, the proper filters, the proper repair procedures. Right, it has to be kept. Yeah. You see, like with going back to the Nissan Navaras, like um, you got to ask yourself a question. I mean, these guys came out with this engine in 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 the nineties, but till today, you can still buy a Nissan with a YD engine. Why is it that they're still making these YD twenty two twenty five engines? Right? There's obviously a reason there. Those engines are actually pretty good, but it's when a lack of maintenance falls into the equation. Right, you don't service the motor when it's due for a service. You 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 you're pushing it over and above the point where the oil loses its viscosity. It's not oil in there anymore. Then you want to know why hasn't the vehicle lasted a hundred thousand? Why hasn't it lasted two hundred thousand? Compared to the guy who's changing his oil every five thousand k's, you 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 you'll see that the manufacturers actually did a lot of research into it. And like we said the other day, some engines are more forgiving than others. Right, you'll find like the, the Nissan engine, because of the, the fact that it's actually a pretty small engine, it's a little 2.2, uh, 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 2,200 cc engine, right? It, it's under a lot more strain and duress to actually get that car up and going. So, given that factor, you find that even though it's a little 2.2 engine, it still pulls the same as a big 3 litre engine. How, why does it do so? For that little engine to perform the same as a bigger engine does, obviously they're running a lot more boost in there. And the tolerances and the spaces and the gaps in between the motor are, are a lot more unforgiving. So you, you'll find that it fuel, the fuel systems need to be monitored. Mm. Your, 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 your oils need to be changed. Your, your, your routine, your service routines need to be adhered to religiously. And you find you've got a better chance of actually getting good mileage out of them. Hmm. In the event that someone then comes through with an Isuzu and uh, maybe it needs to be looked at, maybe they weren't taking, assuming they were not taking care of it properly, what's the first thing that you're looking at in terms of diagnosing what's, what's, what's gone wrong with it? Um, for, for, for modern cars, even the older cars, but for modern cars, usually you have to check um, the quality of oil, you have to check um, your air filter as well, because that's important, that's where the, uh, the engine breathes through. Right. Then you have to check your, your diesel filter, if there are any debris, if there is water, if, if there is contamination. So once you are done with that, you can actually be able to tell if this vehicle is being looked after properly. Let's say you want to buy an, um, an Isuzu. There are some of those things that I have checked. I will have to check um, the filters, first of all, oil. No, not the oil quality, the diesel filter, even the smoke. It was like what we said the other day that the smoke, you can tell a lot of things about your engine yeah. through the smoke. So um, those are the things that we, we check. Interesting. But you are diluting us, Scott. <laughs> you are diluting us. Why? No, I'm not diluting us. I'm not diluting us. So I'm going to say, hey, Zuzu, you're going to think about that. Jump in. Jump in. Jump in. Jump in. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. <laughs> I stand corrected, mm. but I want to believe the... Nissan Navara uses more fuel than the Isuzu. No, 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 no. Firstly, going back to that, I want to. I have a question. Yeah. You know, last week we spoke about um, the Ranger being such a good-looking car. The Ranger, to me, is one of the best-looking buckies on the market, right? 
followed by the Navara. I want to know, Tom and Scatter, when you park your Isuzu and walk away from it, do you guys take a look back to say, yes, I'm driving something trendy? Of course. No, I doubt no, it. No, no, no. I doubt I, it. I, I, you, see, you see that, 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 that front, um, that front cabin there. Of the Isuzu. It's of the Isuzu. Yeah. That, that angry looking, it, it, it almost seems as if it's going to transform into, <laughs> you know, those transformers. It's going to transform and start talking to you. No, no, it's no, so well, the exterior, it's, I, I think it's one of their best models when it comes to the exterior. Scott. They took their time on that. Scott. Okay. You spoke of the Ford. Yes, yes. on Ford. Okay. 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 I was shocked on the new Ford. They've got a big screen, like a TV. You see, ah, so they know their car is boring, <laughs> so they have to be entertained. <laughs> so they have to focus on the entertainment for that one. <laughs> they know it's boring. Surely, surely. What kind of car is that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not go there. Okay, right. okay. 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 Yeah. No, they're just worried about you drivers not seeing, <laughs> not, not, not focusing on where you're driving. Hence, they had to put a big screen in there. That's a good one. That's a good one, Dennis. <laughs> good shot right there. <laughs> but nice okay, one. in terms of appearance, no doubt about it. Um, Ford. It, uh, it it has got better looks. Yeah, it has got better looks. But um, well, he knows in terms of usage, durability. Uh, I just I the general use. Yeah. yeah. No. But 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 honestly though, um, exterior wise, uh, your take on on Navara, I feel like they didn't really put much effort. You know what? If you look at the 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 twenty seventeen Navara coming into the 2018 Navara. Nissan took a leaf out of the customers, out of the end users. That vehicle has actually got soft, pleasing lines to look at. Um, they really put energy and effort into making the vehicle look as if it's going fast when it's parked. You find the way the lights lean back, the lines flow gracefully all the way to the back even that little like a little tail that it has on the on the top of the load tray that to me is actually very very styling it's it's very, very it's a very good good looking truck to me as compared to the isuzu uh, isuzu no okay well it's it's all subjective let's talk about the 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 the, um, the lighting and even i think we can also speak about the, the lighting design as well um, what's your take on that? I think uh, Navara, uh, Navara really went further in terms of the lighting. Oh, yes, they did. Uh, this time, it, it really s it looks sleek and nice. They did, they did. You know, coming off the back foot of actually having one, um, um, Navara used the, the D4 platform very successfully in South Africa from about 2001 to 2008. And they won um, eight consecutive drivers' championships. And you don't win. Uh, rally championships if you haven't got a winning car and to go out there and win eight consecutive championships tells you straight that there's something there's something there and on the back foot of that um, this is then they came out with the newer models and uh, have done a, a real fantastic job in actually getting them to look the part and go the part so for me the way that the, the, the new LED lights flow on that vehicle and and and, and work it's a big plus for 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 Nissan. Nice one. Twenty minutes before we get to twelve on Capital Talk one hundred point four FM. Mare's heartbeat is of course a backy battle between Nissan, Navara, and Isuzu. And I see those that are coming through with uh, their submissions on this one here. We're gonna have a nice time when we end this. We're gonna round it off, and uh, we'll see which car took uh, w w which car basically took it as well. We are live, of course, on Under the Hood in the last and final hour of the Capital Crunch. Capital 104FM. Something exciting coming your way, courtesy of the University of the Free State. Join us on a transformative journey towards academic excellence. If you are a prospective student in Harare seeking a prestigious university experience in South Africa, there's no need to look further. We cordially invite you to explore the exceptional alternative the University of the Free State offers. Our mission is to empower ambitious individuals like you with an opportunity to thrive in a vibrant global community. Immerse yourself in world-class research, engage in meaningful
meaningful collaborations and contribute to groundbreaking advancements in your field of study. At the University of the Free State, we take pride in our seven faculties of academic excellence. Whether you aspire to delve into science, arts, commerce or humanities, our dedicated faculties and the Center for Graduate Support provide unwavering support throughout your post graduate journey so do not miss out on the chance to unlock your full potential join our esteemed institution and make your mark on the world Be begin your remarkable academic adventure with us today so what i'm talking about is happening life size so some of you coming through to ask what exactly is happening it's at cresta oasis to be uh, to to uh, to be particular, nine to six p.m. That's where they camp basically the whole day. If you find time, or if you can't, please make sure you tell someone about it. Uh, take the first steps towards a brighter future. Enroll at the University of the Free State now. It's happiness all day long on the Happy Station, Capital One Hundred and Four FM. We continue with it on Under the Hood, where we are pitting the Nissan Navara versus the Isuzu. I asked something to do with uh, fuel, uh, Clay. You were saying it's 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 not like that. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, with with the new technology, like with the twin turbos, right? Um, and the and the way the fuel and the fueling systems work nowadays, the you know the the. The new Navara's got a lot going for it. It, 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 it. It's really improved on not just its looks, it's improved on its, 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 its fuel consumption. And without doing anything and still running that same YD25 engine, you know, the guys have managed to get an extra 16 horsepower out of the engine plus, you know, uh, um, 50 newton meters of torque. And that says a lot for, its, for, its, for technology working and improving on old things. For me, if something isn't broken, why fix it? Mm. They've done very well with that YD, and look, it's it's a good boat, it's a good package. Your take on in, t in terms of fuel efficiency? In terms of fuel efficiency, um, I suppose beats <laughs> beats them all, including the Toyota. I think I think in terms of fuel efficiency, mm. uh, I suppose it's all, mm, 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 number one. Then probably I'm not sure about the Navara. But uh, I think in terms of fuel uh, efficiency, uh, I suppose it's, it's number one. It has got its own weaknesses, yes, like any other, um, other vehicle. But I think um, if we dwell on, on fuel, um, if it, I think like the fifth generation, you could get about uh, 14, 15 kilometers per liter with the Isuzu. But on on other models, you you, you get about 10, 10 11 mm. the, the liter. So the, the 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 new Isuzu, I'm sorry, the new uh, Navara, mm. right? Um, seven point seven liters per hundred k's, and I mean that's that's what foot. 14. Yeah, 13 k's 13, per litre. That's, that's actually litre. quite good, coming yeah. from a bucky. And remember, this is a commercial vehicle we're talking about. It's designed to carry your stuff. It's designed to, to be worked. And if you're getting that sort of mileage out of something that size, that's a good, that's a good sign. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about towing. How do, how do these two car, uh, cars fare when we, when we look at their towing force? You want to go first? For me, the... The, yeah, you go, you go, yeah. Look, the the older three liter uh, ZDs towed very well. The the the, the two point twos and the two point fives, the YDs for me weren't really great towing vehicles. Um, but now with this with this twin turbo technology, look, they've they've actually improved quite a quite a lot on it because you've got uh, uh, forced air doing a lot of the work for you, and if you can make it work for you stick those turbos on and 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 run with the te technology and give a good package so for me that the, the newer twin turbos are the way to go you don't feel that load behind you anymore but uh, like what you asked for uh, uh, when it comes to towing it's not just the the the, 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 the engine that comes into play you also have to, uh, to consider your chassis how good they they came up with chassis for mm -hmm. for Nissan, but now if you compare it with the with the ISUs, it comes tops. So it might have a smaller engine, a bit of less power, 
but it com complements with a better chassis. So you always have your ISUs pulling better. <laughs> Clay, Clay seems like pulling, he's about pulling, to disagree. Pulling no, I, disagree. Yeah, I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> pulling better. It always pull better than because it's more balanced. <laughs> No, I, I suppose it's a good workhorse. I give them that. I give them that if you if you definitely want something in your fleet that you can rely on for for mundane delivery every day. I suppose it's probably the way to go. But if you want to present yourself as somebody trendy, somebody with a plan, somebody who's got some imagination, somebody who's got some insight, for me, I think, you know, the, the Navara ticks all the boxes. I mean, it, it isn't, if you think about it, the X-Class Mercedes is based on the Navara. And there's no way a company like Mercedes is going to back up and join forces with somebody that hasn't got a plan. So the fact that Mercedes, big as they are, felt that there's something in Nissan, I rest my case. Then what happened? The marriage didn't last. <laughs> <laughs> it was cut short. It was cut short. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the X-Class? That Bucky yeah. from from Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, yes. it was good in Navara. Navara, Navara based. So what what happened when the marriage cut short? What 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 could have happened? What were the determining factors for that? I think someone was disappointed. Yeah, but it's still. I mean, so today you still get them. I mean, yeah. the, the, they still the marriage is still there. <laughs> which marriage doesn't have difficulties? <laughs> <laughs> But good they one. found a good understanding. Good one. When we come to the newer models of these two cars, uh, when it comes to power, I understand the, the new Navara is, is more gears. Oh yes. Than than the 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 the, the, the ICUs. How does that help help it in terms of power? It helps it a great deal in the sense that because you've got more gears. I mean, like with the automatic, you're getting a seven-speed automatic, and that's a long way from where we started with them back in the 90s. Hey, we were happy to have four gears, and in those four gears, that particular range had to cover your getting the vehicle up off the ground and going, having you climb up hills, take your load all over the, sh uh, or, or, you know, down the road. Now, with seven gears, you basically have a gear for every demand. So you find, like, from the minute you, you hook up a load to that vehicle and you, you, you start towing down the road, it doesn't feel as if you're pulling a house. The vehicle's got... The vehicle doesn't have to work as hard as it did before. In other words, in between every gear change, the engines are able to stay in your power band. If it's a power band of two and a half to three and a half, four thousand RPM, you're able to stay in that power band and basically get your load down the road, get yourself down the road, and yes. Can we concede, uh, Dennis, on this one? Can we? Can we say we lost the 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 gears battle obviously because no, of no, power no 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 uh, ah, that one is lost <laughs> 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 but you, you see with manufacturers each manufacturer has got his own way of of compensating uh, certain things yeah so probably the ASUS guys saw that with um, with with five speed with the six speed gearbox it can still do what is necessary because at the end of the day. Uh, like what we were discussing previously about the fuel economy, you find ISUZU still has got a better fuel efficiency with with less gears. So it's 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 just how how the the, the technology is is compensated compensate itself at the end of the day. All right, interesting stuff. So um, we're gonna need a verdict uh, after this. We're gonna come back and we find out what the, what what the people are saying on the WhatsApp platform. And of course, we uh, come up with a verdict for this Bucky battle. Capital 104 FM. Harare's heartbeat. And of course, I'm back again uh, to make sure that you understand this awesome news. And also because it's, 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 uh, uh, underway, currently underway. I'm talking about recruitment for the University of the Free State. It's currently underway at, uh, Craystar Oasis right now from 9 a.m. They've been up there, out there, making sure that you understand further in terms of, uh, uh of, of, uh, going for post grad at the university of the free state so 9 a.m to 6 p.m they are there at Crystal oasis uh today make sure you uh go out there and uh find out what's happening i saw a lot of you come through on the whatsapp platform to find out more about that so 
please, 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 if you do find time, uh, make sure that you pass through by Krista Oasis Center. Who knows? You might be uh, on your way to something, something, uh, something awesome. When we talk about academic excellency, the University of the Free State has you in the fields of science, arts, commerce, and humanities, and of course, um, your dedicated faculties and the Center for Graduate Support. They will be there as well. So something to look at. Something definitely to look into if you want to obtain your postgraduate from the University of the Free State. They are in Harare. And if you're listening in yesterday, so much was said about what they have to offer, especially for international students. They will make you stay at the University of the Free State comfortable. And of course, you can actually enroll for classes whilst you are back here at home in Zimbabwe. And it makes it even uh, more better for you. So why not hurry to Christ Oasis where it's all going down today? Capital 104 FM. Alrighty, someone here then says, um, I think it's a question. Um, on ISUZU fourth generation DMAX, how you get how many kilome- kilometers per liter? I heard it's the best generation, best generation of ISUZUs. That one get 15 kilometers, 14, 15 kilometers, depending with your driving style. Okay. Yes. Uh, another question coming through says, "What is the standard, average, normal, acceptable range fuel consumption rate in kilometers or liters? Uh, kilometers per liter, uh, per liter the for a three liter engine, and for two point, for a two liter and say, one point five liter engines. Yeah. Depending on what cars you you've got them in and." Um, Mainly, it's a lot depending on what cars you got them in. It stands to reason the bigger the the, the, the engine, like the three liter engines, you're not going to get as as far a range as you would out of a smaller 2.2 or a 2.5 uh, 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 cylinder engine. So it's it really varies on a lot of factors. It's not it's not easy to say. The different vehicles have different different factors to consider. Some have heavier chassis, some have different gear ratios. It's all just a case of what vehicle in in, in particular you're asking about. All right, interesting stuff. Um, finally, when we speak about uh, the cost uh, of these two cars, um, what's your take on that? Do you think, you know, fair and fine, reasonably so? I'd say the Navara is reasonably priced. Yeah, I'd say the Navara is, is reasonably priced. You know, considering uh, this is if that if you're talking about the newer the newer version. Yeah. And if you look at the extras that you're getting when you're buying it, I mean, of the buckies on the market now, this is one of the very few buckies that's actually coming out of what's called a multi-link suspension. Which, when you hop into that car, the the reviews and everybody that's on that's had something to say about it. It doesn't feel like a bucky. Mm. And if you're going to get a bucky that drives down the road and doesn't feel like a bucky, what more do you want out of a bucky? Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's marking a lot of boxes for, for people there. And um, the other thing is um, Nissan, the Nissan Navara has now become a real off-road vehicle. It actually has the ability to go off-road. And if you look at it, it's, it's higher clearance that it now offers. The, 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 you know, the stuff like the heel start assist and uh, the heel descent assist, you know, these are all factors that have actually turned the, the Navara into, into an actual off-roading vehicle. Interesting. So, Dennis, your thoughts on the cost of the Isuzu? Do you think it's reasonably priced? Uh, Isuzu have always been priced correctly because it's, 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 a, it's a luxury bucky. It's not just like any other bucky, mm-hmm. so you, you 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 pay more for 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 a good ride, for a for a ride that is reliable, because um, Isuzu's they hold their value, yeah, resale value. Um, it's unlike those other bucky. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the the Nissan, you can say it. Unlike the Navara, <laughs> unlike the Navara, <laughs> I, I'm not sure about the 2023 model. But uh, historically, Isuzu's are known to 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 hold their their, their values much much better than than the, than other bikes. Well, the Toyota tops the list of um, bikes that hold their values, and I think uh, Isuzu comes second. And I'm not sure of the Navara. Wait, 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 I, I, I would wait, say st- stands. 
I would say probably Navarro will come third and yeah. your Ford will come fourth. <laughs> but also what you got to consider is, you know, unlike the days of old, the, the way these vehicles are being made nowadays, the materials that are being used, I would say like there's a shelf life with this thing. You know, you look at them, if you look at a 90s pickup compared, a 90s Mazda B1800, that thing's built like a tank. You can't compare the metal on that vehicle to the metal on the new vehicles. So, you know, considering that sort of a factor, are these vehicles going to last 15, 20, 30 years? I don't think they, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think so. Interesting. Either. Relevant to how you uh, use uh, them. Yes. It's, yeah. It's but they're using the lighter material now. It's completely. Mm. But still, <laughs> but still, <laughs> after three years, you no. see and then it. another thing, um, remember like with, the, with, with these vehicles, you get a South African spec vehicle, you, very important. You bring a UK spec Navara to Zim, right, the chassis are going to give you issues, the bodies are going to fall apart, you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's different factors considered where it comes to where the vehicles are being marketed. Mm. You know, if you're going to go for an SA vehicle, an SA assembled, manufactured, designed vehicle, you stand a better chance of having a more durable vehicle, in mm. my opinion. Interesting. Um, someone here says, I suit all the way, more power, room, roomy, comfortable, right, ETC. My truck of choice is the Amarok, which is a Ford Ranger. And also says, by the way, Master B2, BT50 is also an Isuzu. Um, someone else says, Ndinochika era nafara makorema tatu apfura. Ndinochika era nafara makorema tatu apfura. Ndinochika era nafara makorema Ino Ratizika. So another uh, Nissan fan. Someone here just says Nissan. You didn't tell me your name. Um, someone else here says Navara. And then someone else says, I'm fun. I'm going to come I suit Nissan. It's not Basa. Ira man. And then someone else says Navara. I'm not going to chance for I Suzu. And then someone else says I Suzu. Oh, so I think it's actually the balance in terms of the people, you know. Mm. Fair mm. share of, of the two. Mm. Um, but fairly which one takes take takes takes the cup that's it in all fairness uh, you, you see the, the 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 issue of 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 the buggies you can we can discuss until i don't know but uh, it's it's all subjective mm. people have got their preferences and they've got their own type of cells that that they want but uh, when when you consider probably maybe the cells that um, that you can you can you can you can have let's say but it, it was i tried to get uh, the figures for zimbabwe it, it was difficult. a bit it was a bit difficult mm. but i um i managed to get the figures from south africa and you would find that um, in in their order uh, toyota was ranking number one then there was the ford ranger then, and then there was the isuzu the nissan navara was coming was coming forward all right mm -hmm. yeah. gentlemen thank you so much for your time sandy enjoyed this i'll stick to my eyes either way <laughs> but thank you so much for coming <laughs> and that's pretty much a wrap as well on uh, the uh, capital crunch uh, for this morning how do people get in touch uh, with you dennis um it's 0772 399 you can check on facebook that's tom diesel i repeat again uh, you can get all of us on 0772 399 triple three nice one and for you clay okay uh, thanks for that uh, we at uh, genuine parts we cover all your bumper to bumper needs um we in masasa um you can get hold of us on um zero triple seven six thousand three two or zero seven seven three zero three five eight three four eight three two um, or our Facebook page, uh, Genu Parts, and um, yeah, Genu Parts. Awesome. And it's a wrap on the Capital Crunch for this morning. It's 12 o'clock. It's time for the news. Come and Russia.